Communications, electronics. We have, we, have a, we have an understanding of that. Oh, I pick up the cell phone, the cell phone, and I talk to someone who's on the other side of the planet. Oh, they're, well, they're in the cellular, same cellular system that I am. Oh, we're, we have one world disorder of you know, bee killing cell phones and, and brain killing cell phones. But it's still a model for me to be able to understand oh, this is a fractal of what I am. This is how we function. This is how if, if you have a, a, a prayer, a healing thought, a, a goodwill, love for another human being, it doesn't matter if they're halfway across the planet. Right? There's, there's an actual communication that's experienced as a real-time communication. Uh, and on a physics model, the best way I see to model it is a reverse time communication. If you if you are expressing those kinds of things that are transcendent in nature, that are coherent in nature, the only, in, in, in sentix, the science of sentient touch, they look at waveforms of, of uh, longitudinal waves, like pressure waves, which is like sound and touch. And in touch, they've identified, and you can see it in the sound waves of, of the voice as well, the different emotional states as pressure waves. And there's only the one that's coherent with the heart-centered, joyful, gratitude, uh, you know, appreciation, love, joy, gratitude, that, th those are descriptions of heart-centered, coherent spaces, which trigger the coherence up all the way up and down, you know, we're going to relax, relax breathing, uh, we're activated in a positive way, in an integrated way, not in a stress way, sympathetic nervous system is not activated, that's our emergency response system sends the energy to the muscle, it's not the brain. <laughs> you know, like, act, don't be able to think quite as much. So, uh, so I was thinking how we see ca the causal structure we call causal chains. We'll see, oh, what's happening in this body energetically? Well, the body's saying that the main, the most stressed thing is the head, we'll say. Yeah, well, that makes sense, they've got a headache. The most stress thing is the head, of course it is. Okay, but what else is happening on that first layer of causality? Well, that's the effect, but the cause is the colon. We'll just take a you know, typical example. Results may vary. Yeah. Let's say the colon is causing a headache. Okay, the pain's here, and what do we do? We try to shoot the pain. We say, it's a headache, that's the problem. Shoot the messenger, I don't want to feel a headache. I'd rather not have one today. So we take an aspirin, which studies show is, while it's likely to reduce the severity of that headache, it's also very likely to bring on, to cause, as a proximal cause, an intermediate cause, it causes future headaches. Mm -hmm. oh. what's, cause, how, what's causing what? Am I getting rid of the headache by suppressing an action of my body to detoxify an area and put it back in a gel state where it can't detoxify, but now it's got the new toxin in the gel. More headaches. Now you're going to have uh, chronic headaches, which is great for sales. It's good for the economy. You know, it's, it's helpful in, in, in all those ways. Helpful for, to support people in getting a job where they can be inside a box that, in, with artificial light and electromagnetic fields that are incompatible with optimal life. And we talked about electromagnetic fields. How many workplaces don't have two or three milligauss of electromagnetic fields running through the body? Well, so long as that's happening, you've got a, a stronger field from that man-made waveform at 60 hertz in this country, or higher from electronics, maybe, that's overpowering the EKG, which is normally the strongest field, electrical field in the body, all the way to the toes. And it's essential for that to be the strongest field in order to get 50% of your circulation to your organs. If you're existing, not really living, as a, you know, a wor the work slave in the box, you know, and, and it doesn't sound, you know, sounds like a strong thing to say, but if, we're, if, if, if I go to Walmart and I buy something and take a look at who made that and under what conditions they're living and working, I think, you get a different picture, and that's what we're buying. That's where we're putting our life energy, putting it in full faith and credit into 
a, an idea we call money, no longer the same idea that was held in the past that money is a store of value. Now it's a source of a nozzle for sucking value out of the living beings. Because every time you print more money, that value, any value that it might have, is a dilution of the value held by the living beings who are putting their value in it. I have less. Where'd it go? They have it. It's not local. But that's how we work. We have to understand how we work to be free. We're, we're just enslaved to our culture, whatever culture that, culture that is, to our level of understanding. As Einstein said, we will repeat, we're not going to solve our problems using the same level of thinking, the same type of thinking that we use to create those problems. Global warming, loss of species, genetic diversity. We've lost 97% of the different varieties of food plants on this planet in the last 100 years. And with GMO technology, we can ex we accelerate that, hopefully, and pollute what's left with genes that, in foods that cause the food to make a toxin, right? So you were talking about reverse causality? If who we are, if who you are ultimately, as a spiritual being having this biological experience, you know, we're the, the, the conscious spirit and the biological body are as, as intimate as it gets. They're completely intertwined, and yet not 100% congruently. Is your consciousness in your feet as much as it is in your hands? or in your vision, or in what you're hearing, or in what you're thinking about. The consciousness is, um, has quality of movement, movement at the speed of thought. So when I think about you, if you're on the other side of the planet and I find out she's sick, oh, okay, and I think about you, how long does it take for that prayer to reach you? It's, it's not limited by time. Mm -hmm. And so if who we are, is actually, are you more who you are now, or are you, were you more who you are when you were born, or when you were conceived, or when you were three? Well, isn't there a progression? Are you more who you are now than who you ever have been in the past up until now? That's a good question. And if, if we, if we, if, <laughs> I know. I mean, all cultures have I like have to a, think so. Right? The babies are supposed to be more of who they naturally are. Don't we learn are. and grow? Or are we and actually and degenerating and falling apart? Mm -hmm. Which which are we? We're growing. We're, we're okay. living. We're learning. We're becoming more I'm hoping more we're wise. expanding no matter what. So that being the case, then who we are becoming is ultimately who we are. As a transcendent being that with coherence, we're all of those in one. Because who we are now is not exclusive of who we have been. That's what my memories. That's me. I know me, Ben. I've had experiences in my life. Was when, I was, uh, when I was a boy, I began having experiences where I had communication, not in clear linguistic verbal structures, the, the you know, syntax of words that I could understand in a linear way, but absolute soul communication, heart to heart communication of meaning, of understanding, maybe beyond words, from myself. And you know how we recognize ourself, even if it was me at a certain age. If I have a memory of myself as a seven-year-old, that's, I know me as a seven, that's me, I'm, that's here, I'm here. I'm able to bring that consciousness up for response, like we did at the, the tapping session. We can, we can pull up those memories and make them really present now. And they're, therefore, through the quantum, through the, 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 the timeless connection between now and both future and past and remote distance, that's non-locality. That's the ability to be anywhere, anytime. We can, we can, we can make use of these observations, for example, I love to ask the angels who are 
everything that makes up everything. So we're technically we're angels in my in in my syntax of, of my theory of everything, because angels are communities of angels. If all is fractal all the way up and all the way down, infinitely even perhaps, or not, virtually infinite to us. Fractal we, angels. We can't tell. Getting into another of the deep contextual issues. Time and causality is like water to a fish. We live in it, it's like it's this ocean of time, this river of time really. But it's a river of time that it comes from somewhere. What's the rain that, that feeds the river of time? That's grace, that's, and that's everywhere. It's not just where it's alone and growing in you know, this outgrowth of, of, of creativity, of creating space, uh, creating energy, potential, possibility. But it's, that's where it's concentrated, where it's, where it's totally uniform, but it's within us, and we experience it as emotion, as feeling. That's the consciousness of cellularity, the cell of space between our wall of galactic superclusters and the next one over. I'll have to learn the name of that one. I don't even know if they have a name. For, they must have a name for the cell. It's probably really technical. I'm not. So there's this huge cell of space with no galaxies. And then there's all these galaxies in a wall here and then a wall over here. There's this cellularity of, throughout the galaxy that's Again, on that scale, looks exactly like neurons, which look exactly like the neurons in the soil called fungi, that, that can be aware of all the different plants, and they f actually give the nutrients to the plants. They determine which trees will grow and which won't. When they have a die-off of the ohias, oftentimes you can, you know, right now, we're not sure where the issue is, because not seeing abnormal fungal outgrowths, but we don't know if the normal fungi are just not happy. Maybe the, the chemicals, the solvents that are being injected into the wells in that area are leaking out. We know that the problem is showing up at the fault line. So something is coming up from the volcano, but it's not heat. It's not associated with the volcano itself, its own activity. It's, it's a foreign poison. It's like a mosquito injected a toxin here, and now there's this Bump and it itches, and something's going on different. There's causality. Oh, yeah, there's, of course there's causality. You were talking about angels, or when you asked that, them we're, that, that we are we are angels. We, we're part of that realm because our biological body is made of angels of magnesium and oxygen, and hydrogen, and electrons. And, you know, at every level we can we have names for these creatures, the created things. They're all cellular at different levels, and that we're, they're built on each other. And they're built on atoms that are that build up molecules, that build up organelles, that build up cells, that build up tissue, that build up organs, that build up systems, right? layer upon layer. And no layer is completely separate from all the others. But our soul, our spirit, our conscious body is also built on those same kinds of layers but in a different way. That's not how we can be in control of it with our mind, you know, telling our hands to grab it. We can't grab it. It's super fluid. It can go right through the hand at the speed of thought. It's of a different nature, like the Descartes divide between the, 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 the spirit, the consciousness, the soul, the intellect, the will, all that non-physical stuff. And then the physical stuff. We can measure it. We can poke at it. It's our sandbox. It's outside. You know, we're poking at the sandbox inside too. We can, yeah, we can cut out that organ because it's causing this disease. You don't have, you know, inflammation of your gallbladder if we take your ball gallbladder out. So I guess we it's a cure. Did we remove the cause? Do we was the cause having too many organs? <laughs> or the cause of lack of damage. No, the cause wasn't lack of damage. Surgery, by definition, is controlled damage. Mm -hmm. So if we first do no harm, first we, first we arrange conditions for healing not by focusing on symptoms. Symptoms are distractions from the healing. They are certainly distracting. And it doesn't mean we don't want to ease pain or 
But we want to understand that we can so easily ease pain in a way that damages the soul, damages the consciousness. You know, if you're unconscious on morphine, yes, the pain is gone, but when you pass out of your body as your conscious, oh, wait, your unconscious soul passes out of your body, what does that do? Where does that soul go? Does it realize? Can we realize something new? Can we learn once we're outside the biological body, to what degree, under what conditions. The, bio, the, the, the soul, as a holographic image, holding a perfect holographic image of the physical body, knows the DNA, can reconstruct it. I've described the research where you take glassware and DNA and shine a laser on it, create a hologram, holographic image of the DNA in the glass, and re-irradiate with another laser and, and put in the, the, the pieces of DNA and they actually reform in the same structure. So our body, even you know, clearly from, from current research evidence, probably not likely to be you know, extended greatly by any corporate or government money. You know, like if you're the researcher, good luck, because as soon as you want to publish that, oh, oh no, that, well, we, we can't do that. Can't talk about that. We can't replicate a study that measures you know, the mass of the soul. But uh, yet, if it's real, if it's not real, who cares, right? OK, turn the cameras off. Let's go home. <laughs> Party. <laughs> but if the soul is also made out of these layers of angels, of hierarchies of angels, of minerals, the condensate minerals, condensates of minerals in a high spin nuclear state of the transition metals, uh, the palladium, palladium and the minerals surrounding it, the platinum group, the gold, silver, uh, which we know 5% of the dry weight of the brain is two of those, rhodium and iridium. That alone is just a, a, major, a major clue. Well, how are we going to model consciousness? Oh, well, it's in the brain. It appears to be in the brain. Yeah. Like I said, the, 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 the conscious, what we call the conscious, what we're aware of, that we can put a linguistic title on. And it's tough to do that with emotion. It's kind of fluid, super fluid. It's kind of, you know, I mean, look how quickly it changes in children before we get attached to our models and our ideas of what's happening. But it's, it's this dark energy. It's kind of dark. You can't really see it so easily. But we, yeah, we can put a label on it, linguistically. Put, that gives us a handle on it with the consciousness. And, and that makes it useful as a tool, in a sense. We can now manipulate and control that to some degree. Are there things we can't manipulate and control? Well, manipulation and control takes us a certain distance. It takes us through that, that level of thinking and expressing into the world with our hands to, to, you know, to make things, manufacture, to make Tactics with the hands, manus. To we're in this manufacturing age. We're making these things. We're creating new experiences. You know, the ability to see someone visually with the external eyes. Wow, I can really see them. They're across the world, and I see them on my cell phone. It's a, like a miracle. And to what degree? Well, to, to what degree does staring at a two-dimensional screen of, of mineral phosphorus that's giving a, a, a likeness, an image of, of something real, but that's dimensionally less real. It's not even stereoscopic. It's not 3D. So it's a little bit less real, less dimensional. What is that doing as far as how, what kind of stimulus is that for the development of our consciousness, our, our abilities to navigate this creation when we leave the biological body? That's why we're here. right? Here's your training wheels. <laughs> Wear this carbon copy. And develop the skills, develop the, the awareness. We need awareness. Develop the attachment, the connection of, of heart, of coherence that transcends time and space. So, well, that transcends the biological body already, right? Can you exist outside of there, or are you just your meat to, you know, am I? We have to ask ourselves. And 
and then we're able to think and be really conscious, like human consciousness, because animals can feel, they can see, they have those first two kinds of consciousness. And some, to some degree, are you know, developing a certain ability to demonstrate linguistic communication, which is a pretty egocentric view of communication, like, you know, maybe the whales aren't using words. Yeah, maybe they're describing how it really is, because words are, are not the real thing. They are maya. They are an alteration of the truth. And as soon as we put that word on it, we have a tendency to stop feeling the feeling. Oh, I, I'm not angry. I put that away. I, that's over on the shelf. I don't feel that. What do you mean? I am not angry. You know? <laughs> okay. 